Hello, this is a post commentary replay of the Aria No Return run I just got. I think still playing the game by the way, but not really grinding out categories, doing the optimal strategies to get a PB, since that just involves leaping and lunging all the time anyway. So I've been just kind of playing off enough casually, so I haven't really gotten any PBs. Happy with most of my times anyway. But I felt like playing some Aria No Return. I've done that before with just low percent restrictions on top of it. Since I just kind of like the gameplay, it makes for some pretty interesting patterns. It's just a decent amount of challenge. But for yesterday and today I did some actual runs resetting for cracked walls a bit. Because I felt like I can get a decent time, which I did. So let's watch it. So I didn't only reset for darkness, but it obviously is a preferred thing. So it's really rough on no return actually. Like there's a lot of patterns where you just like jump into something and now it activates and you need to jump back out and well you can't because no return. So like it's obviously great, but it's also really terrifying. Getting ring swap and a bell shower, which is not to disregard right away, is obviously very good. Battle shovel in work right away there. Just getting any kind of damage up on her is super important. That wasn't the optimal pattern there, could have moved forward while you were stuck in the water. Still checking shops, I think. Definitely want some items. Telepathy with darkness is obviously a super great combination. Uh, by the way, like, people often enough just say, why are you playing with enemy hearts? It's, like, super relevant with darkness and telepathy especially to be able to just see when an enemy activates and when it doesn't. Like, obviously you can just know all of those things or you can have the game display you the information which makes it way easier. <coughs> No point in like trying to stall there and get the priority. Uh, not the priority, get the parody with him correct. Just jump into him when there's nothing else nearby. Definitely want to shake a lock shot. There's leaping. As I just said earlier, I don't really want to reset for leaping, but I mean, you have to take it. And there's also a strength charm, which I can get real quick here. Only have one bomb, so I didn't want to spend the bomb on getting gold. So I just buy, I kill the mini boss, nothing else aggroes because of darkness. And grab the strength charm. So now I have darkness, ring swap, and two damage. Pretty great strat. Anything in the black chest here is good. That's often enough the case on her anyway. But here especially, any armor is great, any damage up pushes me to three, which is super relevant. You really just want to be able to kill enemies in one or with mini bosses in two hits. Courage is probably the. Well, I guess you could transmute into Havoc Glass. <coughs> but it's the weakest item and that's it's a damage up. And I actually hate the Ring of Awe in this mode. So I'm not taking that. Realized it afterwards. I have safety in form of the potion, which I think becomes relevant later on. And I have nothing actually with glass that breaks. This is still a challenge run in the end, so I'm not gonna be like beat perfect here in my execution. Especially like warlocks can be really terrifying. Cause the teleportation counts towards moving. And let's maybe not take the minus cap. Could have gone up there since I have luck. There's a quick ball which I do want to check. And again, not everything here is super beat efficient. Trying to get the dragon to come down finally. Sadly, these harpies are going to activate you. But yeah, let's get a ring. Ring of Peace is great. And I don't think I get anything else. I thought about armor. But I still like my damage up and. Like, if I get hit, I can check for armor, since it just takes my potion. Probably didn't need to kill that thing. 
Courage level is feels a bit ambitious. Just going through the shop here. Could have waited for the thing, but I also have five bombs and nothing else to do with them. So I don't actually think I check black here because I really want three damage for the one three especially. Um, push monsters on no return are like really messed up. So being able to kill the harder version in one hit and not two is very much preferred. And our spell is nice. Don't think it gets a lot of use. But yeah, like once you are, like this is really slow so far obviously, but that's how our runs always go. Like often enough you like three minutes out of the first two zones and then take two minutes for the last three. It just speeds up so much, especially if you have darkness in mapping. Getting a bit uh, stuck here with priority on the goblin not coming through. But yeah, here the push monsters I mentioned. If I don't have three damage there, I can't attack it like that. It's not the end of the world, but you also just kind of don't want to deal with that. Just inefficiently taking out the enemies one by one here. I would take a trapdoor in zone 1 here if I have a potion, which I lose here for no real reason. That was obviously just a mistake. So now I think I check black. I'm also fine going down to 2 damage. And again, nothing here is particularly beat perfect. Especially now that I just lost a tiny bit of safety head. If I find heavy glass here, I think I start pushing pretty aggressively. With glass armor, not really. Obviously darkness is doing a lot of work still. It's just like only killing the green dragon here in the exit room because nothing else aggro's in time. Battle shovel did some work there. And I get my potion back here. Not sure if I should have double bombed through. Should have moved on to that guy with a different parody. Using the bounce trip to fix that. Checking for transmit here to get heavy glass. Don't actually need any of those. I could get the glass shaw. Which would have been relevant here. Maybe I could have gotten kills on the clones to then do an Earth kill. But it's also just whatever. It's not like it's a super slow fight. Do I even check anything here? Yeah, okay. I guess I check black for heavy glass again. Yeah. Digging around the bed cave because while I have luck I do not want to trigger that. Green Dragon there blocked the armadillo. No trapdoors on the zone, I don't think. Would have taken one, I'm pretty sure, especially with a ready uh, spell. Sadly, this bed is getting away a bit, but it's also not a big deal. Oh, there were trapdoors up there. I should have checked those. Didn't register. It's a pretty quick level, though, so I probably don't even need to. Okay, and this fight kind of pushed me from like, yeah, sure, that was just like whatever of a run into, man, I'm actually really happy with this. So you're doing the four beats wasted at the start, and then, oh shit, it's horse riders. So, I just kind of do things here. I honestly have no idea what happened on that fight. Like, I just knew I'm not wasting my time for dealing with a horse rider. I'm just going to go for it and hope it works out. Like, yeah, the potion and glass armor, but honestly, if you don't deal with a horse rider, you just get hit, like, every second beat, so... I don't even think that safety was reasonably enough. But, yeah, I don't know. I, apparently, I used the Earth spell at some point to burn a beat, and at some other point, I... buffered on the skeleton. I also did the quick kill not in the normal position, so everything here was, like, not the way I wanted to be. I have no idea what I did on this fight. I just know I got quite the adrenaline rush after it. And yeah, one is a sub-8, I think. So that's why I didn't go for the quick kill. Uh, for a slow kill, sorry. So that fight felt really good. 
But otherwise, I mean, it was just mostly pretty leisurely pace, right? Well, that's just what Darkness does in, like, the last three zones. You can pretty much just go to the exit, kill the mini-boss, and then you're done with the level. Layouts weren't particularly amazing. On the seat, there were definitely, like, a lot of things to speed even the seat up, like just taking the courage shovel. I don't actually know how the courage shovel interacts with... Well, I guess it's impossible for it to protect you. Like, you can't courage shovel dig into a tie you were just on because then it wouldn't be a diggable tie anymore. But it's probably bad in that in the regard that a normal pattern of no return is like you move forward twice and then you dig on the wall and now you can move back again. But if you have the courage shovel, you can't actually do that, so you just need to keep moving. And it's already off enough really awkward on Aria in that you just you can't kill the parody. And I don't think I had the Earth spell at that time. So you can definitely take the courage shovel there. I think I have if I have a fireball or blast tail, maybe I do. So the telep front of telepathy was also just really good. But yeah, and often enough I wasted like two beats here or there dealing with enemies in a not optimal pattern. No return is hard, especially on Aria, so not pretending this is like absolutely perfect play, but I'm quite happy with this time, and especially the final boss fight, which again, don't really know what happened there. <laughs> so yeah, figured it's worth maybe post commentating this, even though it's probably less insight here than normally. Like, I did all of these post-commentary videos like a year and a half ago or something. And I actually had, uh, I think the timeline was that afterwards, a Japanese player um, at me on Steam afterwards. Here. Hoku Hoku Raya. And we uh, had not a lot, but quite a few like interactions I quite cherished about like discussing strategy or like being excited, sharing times and the way I understood he actually quite appreciated the the videos I did and then pretty much improved a lot himself and now is it like I think he started as a score runner and now he's a top speed runner as well, beating my times in a lot of categories. And he's doing some videos on his runs now himself, which are like super well played runs like I think he has better cadence time than I have for example so a little shout out I guess to him yep like it's it's really cool to like get that kind of feedback of hey what you did actually like the what you intended with it like helping people actually worked out so that just came to mind And that's what I kind of had on my mind when I was like, yeah, I guess I could just like do another post commentary on this because who knows, maybe someone else like gets inspired and learns something out of this, like I learned from other people in the past and people learn from me and other people now and so on. Quite appreciate that. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll randomly do these if I get like another PB or world record in either miscellaneous categories like this or real categories because I'm not pretending this category is super competitive and this time it's like absolutely amazing or anything <laughs>